Hello. Well, once again, I stand before you to report that we have got another temperature record around the globe. The world is warming and warming at an alarming rate. June 2016 was the warmest June since records began in 1880. So there's every chance it's warmer than quite some time even before that. And it's the 14th consecutive month in which temperature records have been broken. Now, it wasn't broken by much, only 0.02 degrees Celsius. But nevertheless, you've got to go all the way back to December 1984 to find a month which was below the 20th century average. And this is having big effects right around the globe. Now, the reason it's occurring, well, there are two reasons, in fact. One is El Nino, which has now come to an end, that warming of the waters across the central and eastern part of the Pacific. But the other reason is quite clear. It's because of human activity resulting in the release of greenhouse gases. Now, as we look at um, what's likely to come during the course of 2016, we've already seen 2014 as the warmest year since 1880, 2015 the warmest year since 1880, and according to NASA scientists, it's a 99% certainty that 2016 will be the warmest ever recorded. And those impacts are felt right around the globe. Now, just a day or so ago, I was talking about the heat wave, which is affecting much of the United States. There's a heat wave taking place across the Levant probably to some extent related to a warmer world. But the, another area we're seeing the impact of warming is up through the Arctic. Now, over the last few weeks, I've done stories about extreme temperature across parts of Alaska, 29 degrees on the shores of the Arctic Ocean. It's just ridiculous. Temperatures above freezing right at the North Pole. Temperatures 10 degrees above, uh, above average in Svalbard. Well, at the moment, it looks as though June's sea ice extent was the lowest on record. Now, you expect to say that it's going to continue in July. Well, in fact, there's a little bit of a change because weather gets in the way of climate change from time to time. And there's low pressure across the northern polar region at the moment. And as a result, there's more cloud, more storminess. So July won't see that continue. But nevertheless, it does look as though 2016 is going to vie with 20. 12 as the year with the lowest ice extent on record going back 38 years when satellite records first began and using satellite technology and information we've had some big impacts occurring across the island of Greenland the world's largest island now of course any ice which melts in the Arctic Ocean doesn't affect uh, sea level rises but ice over land, of course, does because it runs into the ocean and contributes to those rises. And in Greenland, a recent study uh, backed by the National Environmental Research Council in the UK has shown that between 2011 and 2014, there was the loss of one trillion tonnes of ice across Greenland, which resulted in a 2.5 millimetre sea level rise around the globe. And just to put one trillion into context, that's a one and 12 zeros. That's a lot of ice going into the oceans, contributing to rising sea levels. And you may think, well, the world, I don't care about the world. I don't care about the Arctic. I don't even care about Greenland. What about where I live? Well, if you think that most of the world's major cities, and you think of them, are located right on uh, the coast at sea level, then the continuing increase in rises in sea level are going to have a very big impact as we head through the rest of the 21st century when sea level rises are predicted to be anywhere between 30 centimetres or, as seems increasingly likely, up to one metre.